All right, so hopefully we're uh, live now, and you guys get uh, got the audio coming through. Looks like. Okay, excellent, and video too. So looks like we're good to go. Um. Okay, so, um, let's uh, let's get to it then. Uh, okay, so let's uh, let's get to it, and um, we've got. Um, oh, hold on. Got my audio on the other computer. I don't want to hear myself talking. Um, so the uh, what we're going to start uh, working on today is a um, uh, basically start the the video game thing. So what I'm going to do in Scratch is let's go back to let's go back to our cheesy um, Bossa Nova um, intro. Okay, which, uh, just remind ourselves where we were with this last time. Um, here's what it looked like. Okay, so we had uh, some things fade in, and then that was pretty much it. And I had uh, disconnected the stuff that made Abby talk uh, just for the... Um, the sake of our sanity so let me put in a um, let me put a sound in uh, here just so that there's some audio okay uh, so we had the uh, the music that played and then it faded out okay so I'm just going to leave everything like it is. Uh, it's a little cheesy, of course, and I wouldn't actually do this as an intro to a game, but uh, for our purposes, it'll be enough to just sort of uh, stand in as our our intro. Um, okay, so the basically what we want to do next is um, we want to start to build sort of a game around this. Um, and so what I'm going to do is... Um, let's look at our bow tie and uh, our ball, and they take uh, some amount of time to fade out and fade in. Uh, the fade basically takes uh, a little over five seconds before it's finished. It takes five seconds before it starts, and then it takes um, a, um, uh, you know, looks like, what, 20, 20, uh, or sorry, 100 times of going through this loop that's not necessarily 100 seconds but uh yeah so what um what we're going to do is in order to synchronize things uh under control or is it events here it is events um i'm going to broadcast um a message and i'm going to call it main menu so when the black sprite has faded out or sorry faded in and so what I'm going to think of that is that when main menu gets broadcast the um, uh, the the intro is finished and we're ready to have the main menu for our game uh, so the other thing I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to put in a backdrop and I'm just going to choose one of the ones that's built in here. Um, um, and we can always change it later. Um, let's do, ooh, let's see, which one do we want? There's all kinds of ones here. Let's do, um, let's do something sort of spacey. Um, okay, so then um, on the stage, where did our code go? No, we have code for the backdrop. Um, don't we have code for the backdrop? Where did it go? 
Oh, we don't in this project. That's right. We did in the um, uh, the COVID-19 simulator. Okay, so uh, what we'll do is um, on uh, rather than having various things start when the green flag gets clicked, we can have them take effect whenever um, the uh, we receive the message main menu. So under the sprite, what I'm going to do is uh, under looks, I'm going to uh, at the beginning of the program show the object and when main menu gets transmitted I'm going to hide the object and so then what will happen is will fade out and then it'll sort of disappear. Okay, um, under the backdrop, let me pick uh, on my backdrops here. Let me um, uh, let me do this. Let me say, um, sorry. Uh, let's do under when the green flag is clicked, we'll set the backdrop to um, backdrop one. That's just the the blank white background, and then when we receive main menu, then switch the backdrop to the stars, okay? And uh, I'm going to go in here and mute the bossa nova just for our sanity. Um, okay, so here's what will happen, right? Everything will appear, and it will fade out, and then we'll switch to the stars background. Okay, so... What I'll do is on each of the sprites that are currently there, the apple, the ball, the bow tie, and Abby, I'll make it so that when we receive main menu, uh, we'll hide each of those objects. And that means when the program starts, we need to make sure to show them. And so I'll take this... Uh, receive main menu and hide, and I'm going to do that to all the uh, the other objects. Um, and so what this will do is it will make it so that um, so show, hide, and do the same thing on Abby. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Um, I'm move all this stuff out of the way. Okay, so when we start, we'll show, and when we uh, receive main menu, we'll hide like so. Okay, so what that'll do then is when um, when the intro animation or the intro sequence is complete with the these objects fading out, then all of them will disappear and we'll be left with just the blank background of uh, the star field. So let's say, uh, let's run it now and see what happens. So it'll do the thing and then fade out and then it will uh, transition to this, but all of the the sprites from our introduction were um, uh, were blanked out, and so we don't see them anymore. Um, and that way, uh, the sort of animation is complete. Okay, so um, okay, so uh, the other thing that uh, we can do here actually is um, we can make it so that um, the uh, that we have the option to end the intro animation early. Okay, so what I'm going to do is under the backdrop um, here where the green flag gets clicked, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to have a loop, and um, the loop. Actually, what I'm going to do is. Um, Hmm. 
I'm going to do a repeat here, and then I will have an if inside. Um, well, actually, no. Uh, I'm going to go with forever loop, and I'll show you guys why in a second. Okay, so if... Um, so in your game, and uh, I'll post the, the sort of formal assignment for this here um, later with uh, the sort of steps to the project, but one of the things that we want to have is we don't want to have to watch the studio animation every single time we play the game, okay? And so it would be nice if we could skip the animation if we so chose. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to make it so that if the space bar gets pressed while the studio um, um, intro is uh, running, then I will transmit the message main menu, okay, and that will make everything stop early. Uh, but the other thing I want to do is if I leave this running as is right now, main menu will get broadcast, but this forever loop will still be running, checking if the space bar is pressed over and over again. And so that means that what I want to do is I want to stop, after I broadcast the main menu, I want to stop running this little chunk of code. All right, so if you put the stop uh, command in here, you have sort of three options. You can stop all. That's equivalent to hitting the red stop sign. It literally terminates the entire program. Okay, you can stop this script, which is everything that's connected to this. Uh, right now, there's nothing, but uh, that would stop just this uh, uh, script here. Um, or you can stop other scripts in this sprite, which would, if you had two things running simultaneously, it would terminate anything else that's running at the moment. So I'm going to use stop this script. And so what that'll do is when I hit the space bar, um, it will stop this forever loop from running. And... Um, uh, keep it so that when I'm, say, playing the game and I hit the space bar, I don't inadvertently tr uh, trigger the main menu uh, program from, uh, or the main menu message from triggering again. Okay, so let's see if that works. Right, so when I hit space, it just sort of instantly terminates everything by telling everything to do the main menu routine Okay. Oh, I've, we forgot one thing here, which is um, we need to, uh, if I receive main menu, then under looks, we need to uh, hide the object. Okay. Um, right, so I'll put that uh, over here instead of down here. Okay. So now if we run it and I hit space, Literally everything just instantly stops running, and we're basically in the state that we would be if I had just hit the button and let it run. Um, now we're in the same state. Okay, so uh, what that means is we've got a way to skip the studio animation and go directly to the start of the game. Um, and uh, that will be useful when you're doing your game because you don't want to sit around and wait for the game to start every time that you test it. So, okay. Um, all right, so now we basically need to make a decision here as to what kind of game uh, we want to, uh, to make. And um, there's a lot of options uh, for types of games. So let me save this. Uh, and let's actually go to the Scratch main page and just kind of look and see what kind of things are out there, different, uh, different games. So let's go to games and let's see uh, what kind of different games people have been making. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I think we've got to check out what this toilet paper hoarder game is all about. So let's see what that is. 
All right, so let's play the game. Let's see what the sound effects are. I mean, the controls are. Just click the TP for points and buy epic upgrades in the shop. Okay, so let's see what this is all about. Oh, it's like Cookie Clicker. Okay. All right, so I'm clicking my TP roll. Oh, okay, and I start to get bonuses based on how fast I'm clicking. Ooh, now I'm really getting there. Okay, so let's see what this shop is all about. Um, so, it doesn't say anything about how to get to the shop. Um... Okay, this is a little ridiculous. You guys still hear me okay? Somebody type in the chat. Can you hear the sound effects that are going on with the game too? Okay, just double checking. Alright, so I'm trying to get to the, the bar to be full. To see what happens. Okay, that should get the idea. There we go. Oh, I see. I just had to hover over it. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, so they've made it just like cookie clickers. I don't know if you guys have ever... You can't hear the sound effects. Okay, so let me double check why. Um... Okay, how about now? No, that's not the right one. Um... I'm trying to get the uh, the, the sound effects from the game uh, in here so you guys can hear. Um, there we go. Okay, you should be able to hear the cheesy music and sound effects now. Okay, so um, so they've got uh, if you hover over the shop, then uh, I don't know if you guys have ever played this game called Cookie Clickers, but it's basically the same principle here. Um, if you, uh, you use your points to buy things that give you, um, that give you the ability to auto-generate the toilet paper, or cookies, and they, it costs progressively more, okay, so then like crate of toilet paper, truckload, okay, so they get some mouse effects here. Right, and so by buying these things, I it can have it auto-generate the um, the TP, and so then I don't have to sit here and click. It'll it'll sort of automatically do it, and the 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 game basically has no um, no point other than just to generate toilet paper rolls and get this number to be as high as possible. Okay, so all right, so I'm going to stop this. Um, and, and to just show you, um, the game that it's sort of, this is the original, um, this is the game that it's sort of based off of. So the idea here is, you've got these cookies, or this cookie, and you click the cookie, and then you hit the, the thing, and you can have the, you buy clickers that basically auto-generate cookies for you. And then you keep doing this, and it's uh, it literally has no point. Um, but this this particular game, this cook, the original Cookie Clicker, has all kinds of ridiculous achievements. I mean, you guys could get addicted to this and play it for years. Um, really stupid kind of game, but um, yeah. So you guys get the idea. Okay, so let's um, let's go back to uh, our project. And we called it Bossa Nova. And see inside, so we can go back to the code. Um, okay, so let's um, let's kind of decide what sort of game we want to program here. I think um, we'll not do the cookie clicker because that's kind of cheesy. But um, 
I picked this space background, so why don't we create some sprites that are like spaceships or something and see what we've got to work with here. We've got the flying cat. We got a bunch of animals. We've got the earth. Um, we've got a ghost. We've got hearts. Lightning. Line. I think I added that one in the paddle. I added that one. Uh, rainbows, puppies, the sun, um, and then a bunch of letters. I thought there were some spaceship type things in here. Oh, here we go, the rocket ship. Um, so why don't we do, um, uh, let's see what we got. Let's do, we had the flying cat. Um, yeah, let's put in the flying cat, and let's also put in, um, let's put in the spaceship that we had, the rocket ship, this thing. Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, I'm gonna, these are a little bit big, uh, at the moment, so, um, I'm going to make the spaceship, um, let's make it 50% as large. Okay, so that's 50%. That's still maybe a little bit big. Let's try 25%. Okay, that's good. And then, uh, same thing with the cat. I'm going to make it, um, I'm going to make the cat set size to, let's say, 50%. Let's see how that looks. Uh, that's maybe a little small. Let's try 75. Okay, that's maybe good. Um, okay, so um, the, the game I have, oh, and the rocket ship, what I'm going to do there is I'm actually going to make it uh, under motion. I'm going to have it point in direction uh, 270. Uh, so that it will face, oop, that's not what I wanted, um, there we go, so it faces towards, uh, the cat, and then under the rocket ship's costumes, I just want to see what we've got to work with, basically it looks like it's sort of spinning here, uh, okay, so, uh, with the cat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the cat can fly up and down. Um, and, uh, so what I want to do is under looks, I want to initially have the cat hidden when the program starts. Same thing with the rocket ship. Okay. And under cat, uh, on the cat, what I want to do is under events, I only want to start doing something when I receive the main menu command. Um, and uh, that way, if I uh, define controls for my cat, then uh, it won't, um, um, it won't uh, uh, start allowing me to move or do anything with the cat until uh, after I receive the main menu command so that the cat won't interfere with my intro uh, sequence. Okay. So the way to do movement uh, or controls. So you guys maybe notice that there is an option up here, say when spacebar is pressed, or it can be any key, uh, sort of the normal keys, including any key. Um, so I could do, for example, when up arrow is pressed, move the thing up. When down arrow is pressed, uh, move the thing down. Uh, so I could do that. Um, but uh, I don't want to do that, uh, and the reason is that the uh, the up arrow being pressed uh, and me sensing it with this object is kind of laggy, and um, it um, uh, will result in kind of jerky controls. So I'm not going to use this for the controls. What I'm instead going to do is have a loop. And then I'm going to check if 
the up key or the down key is pressed. And by putting it in a loop that's continually running, it'll be much more responsive control and it won't be jerky kind of control. Okay, so uh, then under sensing, I want to say um, I've got the option for touching, uh, or which we used before, or if a certain key is pressed. And in this case, I want either the up arrow key or the down arrow key. Okay, and then we just have to decide what happens when you press one of those. Well, then under uh, motion, um, then what we'll do is we will um, change the Y coordinate by, if you press up, we'll have it go up, and if we go down, we'll have it go down. So let's see what would happen like that. Okay, so maybe that's a little bit too jerky because we're skipping up and down at 10 at a time. So let me let me decrease that to say 5 and minus 5. Oops. And let's see. Um, well, okay, I hid the cat. That's my bad. So under looks, I need to make it so that the cat is visible. Okay, so there he is. Um, okay, so maybe that's a little bit too slow, but... Whatever, we'll, we'll call that good. Um, okay, so now the cat can move either up or down, and I've got basically the input control in place. Uh, under the rocket ship, I need to have, when I receive main menu, uh, I want to, actually I'm going to leave it hidden uh, for now, but uh, we'll, we'll do something in a second there. Um, Okay, so any questions on the cat's controls here? Uh, just moving up and down. Okay, so you got any questions, uh, put it in the Discord chat or the, um, the Twitch chat, s'il vous plaît. guys are uh, real uh, real bouncy this afternoon no no questions you guys are making me sad pandas so all right well I guess we'll keep going um, all right so let's take our rocket ship and um, You're just there so you don't get fined. Could you go back to the backdrop, please? Sure. Okay. What do you mean, Reese, that you get fined? Uh, and Jimmy, what's your question on the backdrop? Yeah, tell that to the uh, um, eight people that are missing. Uh, what was the way you did the, the transition? Oh, okay, so the transition actually was on this guy. So we had, um, basically I created a sprite that was a solid black, um, a solid black sprite that was the entire size of the screen. And so I, use that and made it appear that everything was fading out by having this solid uh, solid black sprite that covered the entire screen slowly fade in. Uh, so that's what I programmed in I think Wednesday um, and that's kind of a trick uh, to make it look like everything's fading out without having to do individual fade outs uh, for each object. You could um, do individual fade outs for each object that would work 
uh, it would just um, you just have to do it on an individual basis so okay um, all right so let me go back to the rocket ship here and um, kind of what I'm imagining is uh, a side scroller game like where uh, rocket ships will appear over on the right hand side of the screen and they'll move progressively to the left and uh, maybe we'll give our cat the ability to fire a laser and uh, it will like um, uh, try to destroy the rocket ships so it's like a space invaders kind of game uh, okay so for that since I want to do a kind of a rocket ship thing or uh, space invaders I need to have a sprite that's basically going to be my like my light like, weapon, uh, if you will, and uh, so this is one reason I programmed in here uh, the line or the paddle, and the idea was I was thinking of the line or the paddle as being like um, um, uh, laser beam or something like that. We also could use the little lightning bolt here, so let me do that. Let me put in the lightning bolt, okay. And uh, the couple of things I'm going to do is I'm going to make it face uh, to the right. Um, and I'm also going to make it uh, a lot smaller. So I'm going to make it, let's say, let's try, say, 50%. Um, let me put the cat in. Um, and let's sort of see. Yeah, I guess that looks okay. Um, 50%. Okay, so we'll um, we'll have it be there, um, and then I want to basically make the uh, uh, for the main menu. You meant sorry, um, Jimmy. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Um, so can you you elaborate or? Um, Okay, so while you elaborate, let me um, let me make it so that the cat can fire the lightning bolts. Um, okay, so under this, under my controls, I want to basically tell the cat, give the cat the ability to fire the lightning bolts. So under control, I'm going to say if sensing, um, and now we basically just have to decide what's going to... Um, what's going to trigger the lightning bolt to be uh, to happen um, I could use the space bar that's maybe uh, uh, that would work or I could use whether or not the mouse was clicked uh, so mouse down just means that the the mouse button is uh, you are currently clicking the object um, I'll just go with um, I'll go with the space bar because we've already um, we're already using the keyboard. Um, okay, so that'll be fine. All right, so we'll say if the space bar is pressed, then uh, let's broadcast. Doc, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. There's a little bit of a delay, but yeah, I can hear you. What's up? Okay. Um, All right, not sure what's up. Okay, can you hear me now? I can. What's up? Can you hear me now? Yes. Hello? I can hear you. Hello? What is going on? Hello? Yes, I can hear you for crying out loud. Oh, help. Okay, relax. Hey, shit. No, don't lag, please. Please, no. Hello? All right, I'm going to mute you. We can talk later. Fuck. <laughs> All right, so um, the um, let's go back to the to this. So I don't want to broadcast main menu, but a new message. So we'll call her it call it fire for fire the lightning bolt. Okay, and so then under the lightning bolt, what I want to do is um, let's say. Um, Uh, 
Oh, this is going to be interesting. Okay, so um, what we'll do this uh, when so under events when I receive the message to fire the lightning bolt, um, then I want to um, let's see I want to create a clone of myself um, and I want to have the thing move to the right okay so what I'm gonna do is repeat until something is true and under motion I'm going to move uh, towards the right and um, right now Let's see. Um, um, okay, so this will take me a second to get everything uh, put together. I'm going to create a clone of myself. When I start as a clone, I'm going to set X to minus 90. Okay, so that means it'll be sort of where it is there. And then I'm also going to, under motion, set the Y coordinate to something. I'm going to change what this is in a second. Um, and then I'm going to repeat a procedure uh, here in a second and make the thing move to the right. Okay, now, uh, the set the Y to minus 9. Um, okay, so if I, if I do this... Uh, so I need one other thing here. I need to show. Okay, so let's uh, let's run this. Okay, so basically when I hit that, or when I would start the lightning bolt as a clone, then the lightning bolt would move towards the right, like so. Okay. Now, there's a couple things that are a little freaked out with it. The first is... Um, I want it to disappear when it hits the end of the screen, okay, and so that's why I did a repeat until, and so under motion, I'm going to say if the X coordinate is, right now it's at 270, okay, and that's basically the biggest it can get, so I'll say under operators, if the X position is greater than, say, 269, then I've reached the far edge of the screen, and so what I should do is uh, delete this clone. Okay, so now watch what will happen. Uh, why did that not disappear? Let's try 250. Maybe I'm just off by the... Oops, sorry. Change X by 10. Delete this clone. Why is it not disappearing? Um, oops. Mm. Oh, okay. Maybe what I just need to do is under looks, I just need to hide it. Um, yeah, there we go. So, there we go. Okay, so let's go back to what did we have it as, 269, and there we go. Okay, so now it makes it look like my lightning bolt is uh, going to the right. Um, I'm going to do something kind of cool here, um, just for the sake of fun. I'm going to change the color effect each time we move it by... Five, and so that'll make my lightning bolt kind of do this sort of rainbow kind of thing just to make it look neat. Um, anyway, okay, so uh, so let's run what we have so far. Uh, so the cat has two costumes. Could we make it to one space bar is pressed, the bolt is fired, and the uh, so that it looks like he's throwing the bolt out of his hand? Absolutely, we can do that. So let's uh, let's do this. So um, let's say um, uh, we could do this. So when spacebar is pressed, switch the costume to the other costume and then switch it back. 
like that. So let's see. Uh, so if I hit space. Okay, so a couple things happened there. Um, it did switch the costume back and forth. Uh, it just happened so fast that we couldn't see it. Um, and so what we probably should do, the other thing is, so let me hit this again. You see how it basically um, produced a crap ton of lightning bolts there? Um, it basically did so, like if I hold the space bar, it's going to continually make um, new clones. So I can actually solve both problems uh, by putting a slaw weight in after I, okay, I'm going to leave it at one second here. Okay, which is maybe a little bit too slow. Okay, but, uh, so I've got a one second delay here between when it switches, um, um, when it switches from back to the original costume. This also means that I can only fire right now uh, one lightning bolt per second, which is maybe a little bit too, too few. So let's like make this every say half a second. Okay, something like that. Um, and again, maybe we could tweak that value, but uh, yeah, so you get the idea. Okay, so now the cat can fire every um, um, every few um, uh, every half a second and it makes it look like he's actually doing something okay but what I want you to notice is so I'm gonna move the cat up here watch what happens to the lightning bolt So, uh, what did you guys notice about where the lightning bolt is? Yeah, it doesn't follow the cat, okay? And the reason for that is that under the lightning bolt, we set the Y coordinate of the lightning bolt to some number, but that number doesn't depend on where the cat is. Now, if we go to sensing, or not sensing, but motion, we do have this variable called Y position, but that's the Y position of the lightning bolt, not the cat. So if I want to have the lightning bolt follow the cat, what I'm going to need to do is have the cat have a variable, um, and I'm going to make this a for all sprite, sprites, and I'll call it cat Y position. Okay, and then, um, under the cat, what I'm going to do is every time I, um, sorry, let me stop that. I'm going to set the cat's Y position to zero at the same time I set the Y coordinate to zero. Okay, so that'll make the cat start in the middle. But then any time I change y by a certain number, under the variables, I'm also going to change the cat's y position by that number. Okay, and then under the lightning bolt, what I can do is set y not to minus 9, but to the cat's y position. And now, oops, uh, here, let me get the cat in there. Um, there we go. Now, the, um, the lightning bolt fires from wherever the cat is. Um, as we play our game. Okay, so that fixes that problem. Okay, so I think we're, we're pretty good with the cat. Um, so any questions on the cat part of it uh, for right now? And then we'll, uh, the cat or the lightning bolt, and we'll, we'll uh, move on to the rocket ship um, uh, later.
is there a way to add health? Yes, completely. Um, so the the question would be if we wanted to have a, like a health bar. Yeah, yeah, we can totally do that. So there's two things that we'll sort of have to have to do a health bar. One would be uh, since a health bar is an object that we would be displaying, we either need to have a sprite that uh, represents the health bar uh, or uh, like um, we could do it like in Zelda where there's a specific number of hearts uh, that you um, that you have and then when you get hit you lose a heart uh, or we could just use a number uh, like for example here we've got the cat Y position uh, that variable being displayed we could make another variable called health uh, for example um, so uh, yeah we've got a uh, couple ways that we could do that um, and uh, then the similarly uh, we'll add in, um, we'll probably have to wait on this until Monday, but we'll add in the rocket ship mechanics so that uh, the rocket ships will be kind of moving from the right and um, maybe they are, if they run into the cat, then he loses a health point or something like that, I don't know. Um, yeah, so we could totally add in a health. Um, at minimum, to do that, we're going to need to have a variable to keep track of it, okay? And then maybe we'd say... Uh, when the game gets started, we'd set the health of the cat to... So, in fact, let me just go ahead and make the variable um, called cat health. And let's say he initially starts with 10 points of health. Okay, then um, we could just use this variable display to keep track of it. Um, we can make some graphics to keep track of it also, but at minimum we need to have a variable that uh, keeps track of it uh, so that um, uh, we've got that data stored somewhere. Uh, okay, so yeah, so let's, uh, let's kind of get ready to quit here for the day. So uh, the things we need to add basically are uh, we need to make it so that the rocket ships um, uh, appear and start moving. Uh, we need to make it so that when a rocket ship gets hit by a lightning bolt, then um, then something happens to the rocket ship, like it disappears. Um, we could, for example, make this like, um, uh, there's a lot of these side-scroller like shooting games where uh, you can get power-ups and uh, maybe there's like a boss or different levels. Um, so there's lots of ways that we can spice this up. Um, We'll go with the, uh, uh, on Monday, adding health to the cat and getting the rocket ships to work, um, and uh, then kind of continuing. So, anyway, um, the other thing I'll, on the, this weekend, I'll post the, um, uh, the sort of details for the big project, which is the, the video game uh, development project. Basically, it'll be, you're going to do a video game of your own kind of imagination, um, I'm just kind of walking through sort of an example as to how to develop one. Um, and part of what uh, I'm going to have you guys do is uh, it'll involve a little bit of writing. So I want you to sort of write a brief, um, you know, roughly one page or so um, thing called a design document. And, uh, and I can give you sort of an example as to what I mean with that. Um, that will sort of describe what kind of game you want to make, what sort of features you think you should add to it, what sort of the style of it, um, what are features that like you'd say, okay, um, if I get everything working, then uh, maybe I'd add a second level or something like that. Uh, so what do you think of as sort of the core features? What, do you, what is sort of going to be your stretch goal in terms of... Um, uh, um, you know, what other features you could add once you're finished with making the game itself, uh, etc. So I'll post uh, all the details of that to Canvas, um, and uh, we'll keep going on Monday. So uh, if you guys have any questions, I'll go ahead and end the stream and uh, pop back into the Discord channel. Um, so if you have any questions, then just hop back into... Um, uh, yes, the stuff on recursion and iteration are still due tonight. And, um...
they were originally due earlier and I've been nice and extended them so uh, just yeah no procrastination um, anyway so uh, so pay attention to canvas uh, for some updates here in the next couple days and I'll see you guys Monday if not sooner I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream but I'll hang around on uh, discord uh, in case there are any questions all right thanks for coming and I will see you guys later